Hello, Tracy from Salem. Coming in with my the final book for my Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, just been working out binding in the pages, adding the button clasp, um, and just doing those final details. And it is finally done. So I'll just start by saying this project has been amazing. I've loved this challenge. I've done tons of stuff I never would have tried before. I just want to give a huge shout out to Rachel and Sarah for the brilliant idea, the phenomenal guidance, all the um, uh, support and, and shout outs they've been giving on the Facebook page. It's just been a joy. So thank you so much, Rachel and Sarah. Um, so I'll just do a, a quick flip through. Um, I made the cover out of um, Pellon covered with um, upholstery fabric and I just added this binding um, and then I just bound in the, the stitches, the, the signatures very, very um, subtly and, and didn't make a whole big thing out of the binding. Um, and then added this lovely button and uh, created one of these, uh, just, th this, just using the button stitch, created this clasp. Um, so here's my cover page, um, which was potentially my favorite page in the book. Um, just, I loved all, the whole thing, but I think this is probably like, just based on how, th how it came out, I think this is probably my favorite. So really enjoyed that. Here are my uh, samplers from the beginning, um, practicing all kinds of stitches. Um, this, I, I think the hair was the January page. Um, my pages might be a little bit out of order just be from the way the signatures developed and the pieces developed. Um, and uh, yeah, because yeah, I think it was uh, lace and rabbit. Um, uh, so, and I loved it so much. I did the second page um, and this was a ton of fun and way outside, uh, you know, anything I'd ever done and outside of my comfort zone. So that was super fun. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the uh, February page, right? The, the vintage, or no, sorry, neutral backgrounds and flower. Um, and uh, I think that what I really loved about this was trying to figure out how, how I was gonna cover. So I, I wove the fabric and, you know, just then had raw edges of, of weaving, which, which could have been very nice, but I really wanted something. Um, and so I kind of developed this stitch to go um, on the verticals and horizontals. So that was something I kind of, uh, kind of a big creative step for me. Um, and then this is the Mar March page, which was uh, something and butterfly, I can't remember. Um, not a massive fan of butterflies, and so, uh, you know, like as a as a as a motif. So I did a um, dragonfly instead, and I just stitched it on layers of tulle and um, what's that other stuff called chiffon. I just kind of built. I just put a couple layers together in a hoop, and stitched uh, stitched it up. And then I found this wonderful sari, a piece of sari from a. Gwen Lafleur pack I had bought, and it just ended up being going perfectly. Um, so I kept it, you know, pretty simple and let let the focal point speak for itself. The April page, oh my God, this page just gave me fits. <laughs> uh, right, so it was um, oh, cozy cottage and old quilt, I think it was, and I had no old quilt, so I decided, oh, yeah, let me do something I've never done before, which is to make a crazy quilt. Sure, just whip that together for the first time. <laughs> this made me, yeah, not to, no pun intended, but it made me crazy. Um, but I, but I got through, uh, and, you know, did lots of different stitches, which was fun, to do, I used a lot of metallics, which I, I can't say that I use all that often. Um, I used a lot of metallics in this whole challenge, which I can't say I've done very often. So that was really cool. And this um, is the first time I ever worked with GIMP. Um, this this particular flower is maybe a fave of mine too in this whole journal, because I love the way this GIMP came out. Um, so that was April. Um, <laughs> now, for some reason, suddenly, the last signature is 
radically smaller than the other signatures. I don't know why that is. I, I cut them all the same size. I mean, obviously I didn't. Obviously I didn't cut them all the same size. For whatever reason, this one was much smaller. I don't know why, who knows, who cares? <laughs> um, this is the May page, which was favorite color and bird. Um, and so here's my egret, which I um, have this wonderful um, sheer white curtain that I use a lot for moons. And so I just stuck that in the hoop and stitched that up. Um, I got this uh, from a kind of an art deco um, wallpaper pattern of, uh, of it's probably supposed to be cranes, but cranes and egrets are very similar. Um, and so I did it as a white egret. Um, so very stylized. Um, and I used um, the same idea of the um, woven uh, fabrics that I had used in February. Uh, but this time I did this wonderful stitch called the Spanish Feather the Spanish Feather Stitch or Spanish Feather Something Stitch, which I, I absolutely love. Um, and I used that on the in between, uh, you know, on the verticals and horizontal lines. And I, so I really love the way that came out with a variegated linen thread. Um, so that was May. And June um, was uh, dyed backgrounds, dyed or painted background and heart. Um, so these, uh, this linen and this cotton are both hand dyed. It's hard to see uh, the, vari the variation in the fabric because I cut strips, but they are hand dyed. Um, not by me. <laughs> um, and then I made, um, I made my heart similar to the way that Rachel made hers in that I got some batting and um, then I collaged on. I, you know, I just, I put it in strips and then um, did some, used some gold thread. Um, I felt like bling was necessary on a pride page. Um, so I used a lot of gold thread, um, and put this, the, my favorite quote from Lynn manuel Miranda, love is love is love. And then I was feeling like, I was feeling like there were some empty areas and that I was going to make some other hearts, little, like little hearts and put them on. But meanwhile, I had been watching this video by Ariane Zercher about how to make dorset buttons and wanted to try some. And I was like, hey, since I'm going to try some, why don't I try some with some pride colors? And so I made these three buttons with the pride, the colors of the pride flag. Um, and uh, it's hard to show them so just the way the page lays. Um, but that one might be my fave. Um, and these are more, like more subdued subdued version. Let me see. Let me get that on there. That's better. Um, so that was my June page. So then I still had the back of this page uh, and needed to do something there. So I really um, hadn't, I don't use couching that much. And so I wanted to kind of just really try something with couching. Um, and so I just did an all couching sampler. I, I had been thinking I would end with another sampler the way I started. And I decided to do an all couching sampler because I saw kind of a version of it in here, in like this book, which I've shown many times on the YouTube. And I will probably just be spend like months making things out of this book. It's just so fabulous. So she has these pages where she teaches you how to do a particular stitch. And she has this page where she teaches couching and you know here's her sampler and I was like oh yeah that's great let me make that um so that's what I did um and really uh you know used a lot of uh I used a lot of wools um most of these like this is all these are all wools a lot of these in here are actually wool left over from knitting which I can't do anymore because of a, a bum thumb and then I tried sari um and I tried some some threads which I had gotten through Steph Francis has like a sampler pack so selection pack I forget what she calls it exactly but it's like five different kinds of thread all dyed in the same colorway and some of them for example this chenille uh, let me tilt that a little bit um, that chenille you can't pull it in and out of fabric because the chenille just pulls right off the thread and you're just left with the thread that's inside of it. Uh, so you can't use it to go in and out of fabric. And same with this, um, 
this, uh, this is like a silk, um, I don't remember what it's called, if I could just get it on camera. It's a, it's a silk something or other. And the same thing, if you try to pull it through fabric, it just wads up into a big knot. Um, and so I was like, well, this is a bummer. How am I ever gonna use these beautiful, gorgeous threads? Um, well, it turns out that they are terrific for couching. Here's another um, one of these chenilles dyed in a different colorway. Um, and so they turn out to, oh, they feel so good too. Um, so they turn out to be great for um, couching, as is all this sari. Um, here's some other stuff from that same selection pack. This is like a kind of a ribbon. Um, and um, so on some of them I did like, I did like the buttonhole stitch to couch this down. Uh, I did like a knotted stitch to couch this one down. Most of them I just did a basic couching stitch. Um, I really, I've never done these. Uh, I think this is called trapunto where the thing is like raised up off the um, material. Uh, so I really enjoyed that and want to figure out how to do more of that. Um, I think you can see it, that it's raised. Um, so yeah, so that was a great way to end, to end with another sampler. And, um, and there is my uh, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Thank you so much again to Rachel and Sarah. So um, I'm just gonna come in with a couple other things I've been working on. Um, I've mentioned a few times that I'm doing a um, stitching retreat, finally going on vacation to do some kind of art, and I'm really excited um, for that. These are really big, they won't fit in the camera. So I am going on, uh, I'm going to do a retreat with Sue Spargo, who does a lot of uh, embroidery stitching and she's got this book creative stitching and um, I've mentioned before when I signed up I did not realize it was an advanced <laughs> math you, th you think maybe the title of it master of stitchery I'm sorry master of stitchology would have alerted me <laughs> um, that it was an advanced class but no I just sailed right over my head and then when I got the materials you know the confirmation email and stuff it mentions that it's an advanced class and that you have to know how to do all the stitches in this book. Um, so that is what I've been working on here and there. And so it's been great. I've, I've worked it into pieces for the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Uh, so then we get our homework, which is to create six panels. Um, and they give a, uh, an outline for this circle and this circle. Uh, and so you have to create six panels where the back is wool and then of 12 and a half by 12 and a half. And then you put on this circle of, of cotton and this circle of cotton in the middle of that. Um, and we'll be doing stitching like all in here and stuff. So you had to create six of these. I created seven because I know I will cack one up, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, a, I'm still a beginner, even, even though I've gotten well through this book and I will finish this book before I get there. I'm still a newbie. I've really only been stitching about a year, well, two years maybe, um, and the last year, seriously. So I'm still a newbie. I'm still fumbly when I learn new things. So I'm gonna cack one of these up. So I made a, I made seven of these um, and uh, it was pretty fun. I did it with my mom who has this amazing sense of color um, and she also has, she's also a rug hooker. And so she has tons and tons of this wool. So I had a couple pieces of wool and I was prepared to buy some more. Um, and I had uh, all these cottons are mine. Um, and the, some of them I have, um, velvet on the middle. This one I've got to recut. It's totally screwed up, but, um, I've got velvet on a few of them and cotton on a few of them. Um, so these I had already. Um, lots of them coming from artistic artifacts um, and some other places. But I only had like two or three pieces of wool, so I was prepared to buy them. But it turns out my mom has tons and tons of wool because she's a rug hooker, and so she's got these left over from various projects. So this fabulous, crazy-ass green um, that just went perfect with this. Um, this gorgeous 
uh, piece of wool that she had that was hand, it's hand dyed. Um, and so she gave me this wool. Um, and uh, I think this is also her wool. It's kind of, you'll see it, I think, on the mother circle. I'm not sure. Um, this gorgeous, gorgeous pink uh, that went perfectly with this Australian designed, Aboriginal design um, from Artistic Artifacts went perfectly. And this one, I, this middle circle, I stuffed. Um, and I think I'll probably stuff the other ones that are velvet. Um, this background was mine. I, I already had this. Um, and I already had this. And then look at this. This is my absolute favorite. Can you freaking believe this? so gorgeous. This green is one that my mom gave me. Again, hand dyed. She knows a lot of hand dyers um, and uh, wonderful sources um, from her years of rug hooking. Um, this is probably my favorite and I'm like, I might not ever even touch it because I don't want to mess it up. It might just be the one that sits to the side and I just look at it and think about when I'm better I'll do that one because I really don't want to mess this up. It's so gorgeous um, to me. So these are what I have ready for the Master of Stitchology retreat in August um, on Madeline Island, this Madeline Island School of Arts. Uh, I think there's just a couple, two, three places left. Um, so you can go to the Sue Spargo, if this is of interest to you, and if you're a stitcher and, and you want to, um, you know, take your stitches. So we're going to, we have to know all these stitches because we're going to take them all up, a, you know, a level. Um, so if, if, uh, you know, stitches and you want to kind of take it to the next level, or you just want to like get in there and, and just play, um, it's just going to be like five full days of play, um. So you can go to the Sue Spargo website, I guess, and, or, uh, or the Madeline Island School of the Arts website, I guess, also. I'm not, <laughs> they're not paying me to endorse this. I'm just really fired up. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's, that is that project. Um, then this project I really haven't worked on very much because I've been trying to finish up um, getting ready for the Sue Spargo retreat and also trying to finish up the Roxy Journal of Stitchery. Um, uh, book. Um, so again, this is again out of this book, Expressive Stitches, and um, this is, uh, she has a whole chapter on memory cloths, and I'm doing a memory cloth, um, and this is the one that inspired me. Um, so there's, you'll see similar design motifs. Um, but it's obviously a different memory, pretty different coloring. Um, you know, so you can see, you see the, the, uh, similarity here in these side panels. Um, and then what I did here was I did basically kind of a starry night, sort of a running Cantha starry night to have to be the background of, of this. Um, and what's going to go here is I'm going to make another one of these. Now that I've made one of these egrets, um, I kind of, you know, I can see, I can see all my mistakes and that's great because I, I see exactly where I have, where I have to learn and what I have to do, you know, what I want to do, um, differently to uh, fix what, I, what I perceive of as to be things I would prefer to do, to do differently. So I'm going to make another one of these egrets and it's going to be flying right here. Um, and then some of these parts are finished. Uh, so this, this is the flower that was in the middle of the Sue Spargo memory quilt. I put a, a miniature version of it down here just to honor her. And, um, so I've got, you know, a couple of different things happening, which have to do with my memory and also which are decorative. Um, I really enjoyed doing this um, kind of lattice thing um, from uh, inspired by Sashko. Um, and here's that wonderful, <laughs> that wonderful gimp again. Look, isn't that just fantastic? 
Oh, I love that stuff. It's very hard to work with. Um, so that's where my memory cloth stands. Um, so that's that. And then um, I'm working away on my Sue Spargo book. Here's, this is my um, practice cloth. Um, oh, I'm just gonna say my mom for my birthday, which is this coming week, um, splurged on me and got all of these um, threads. She gave me some of her own threads too. Um, but we went through on the Sue Spargo website and went and looked and held those claws that I just showed you, the, the square ones with the circle, um, and kind of looked at them and got threads that would match those squares that we, we ended up putting together. Isn't she the best mom? She is the best mom. So <laughs> um, these will all go with me to Madeline Island. Um, and then this is my practice cloth, um, which I think I've showed before. It's, it was just one panel, I think. Uh, one panel, um, but it's, I just come here when I need to practice a stitch, I don't want to practice it on the final piece of whatever I'm creating. Again, you know, I'm just so new that, um, and then going through that book, kind of just practicing the various stitches. I, I, I like this one. I like that one a lot. Um, and some, some of these stitches I will probably not use because they're just not really who I am. You saw the difference between that practice cloth um, and uh, what Sue Spargo does, which is um, all of these. She does, this is what she's known for, is these little circles with all the fancy stitches. Um, and they're wonderful and that's lovely. That's not who I am and that's not what I'm gonna be doing um, in my own particular work. Uh, but it's about learning the stitches. It's about, you know, kind of getting really rigorous. It's like learning grammar, right? You break the rules of grammar much better when you know what the rules are, right? <laughs> um, and so uh, somebody like E.E. E. Cummings, which who has no punctuation and every, his poetry is like words are all, you know, grammar is not a priority, right? That doesn't mean he didn't rigorously know the rules of grammar. And so that's kind of what this is to me, uh, going through this book um, and going to this retreat is it's about fun and it's about stitching a lot and hanging out with other people who love to stitch. Um, but it's also about learning the rules really rigorously so that I can break them in ways that are me and that will support my work and what I wanna do. So. Um, yeah, so you here you can see me just practicing, practicing various stitches from the book. <clears throat> um, and then also starting to create these little circles that Sue does where you use like two or three different stitches on a, um, on a circle, right? So you, I have a stitch that I'm using around the circle and then a stitch I did kind of across the circle and then I did a whipped woven. Um, I did just a wheel, right? So there's like a, this, this I think these are like uh, coral knots maybe around. Then I did a wheel underneath that. Then I used the gimp to um, make French knots or some kind of knots. I forget exactly what I did there. Um, here's that uh, chenille I was talking about that you can't take in through the fabric, but it's perfect for a whipped woven. Um, uh, bullion knots here, I'm practicing. Um, so you can see um, some turkey work and some, uh, I forget what you call these guys. Um, yeah, I forget what you call them. So just getting that practice going. And then I, I uh, created some, um, I recently had a flight out to, um, I can't make this zoom in. Why won't this zoom in? I mean, zoom out, I mean. There we go. Um, I recently had an airplane flight out to visit my brother, so I started kind of making some more, you know, these were just my first circles, really just trying to practice stuff. Now I'm 
Now I'm actually trying to like make something that looks good. Um, so I, I cut up a ton of uh, circles um, just to like carry around with me and I will practice and there's some beads in there. That's I think beading is the next chapter in the book that I have to do. Um, so uh, trying to kind of be more thoughtful about how I'm actually creating these circles um, so that um, I'm actually trying to conceive of an idea and you and pick the stitches that will work. Um, not quite there yet, um, but you know, baby steps, right? I've still got a month and a half, I guess, until I go. So that is my practice, uh, my practice piece. So yeah, so that is uh, what's going on. And um, I think I was going to maybe do some stitching today, but I feel like maybe I've gone on long enough. <clears throat> 25 minutes seems long enough. Um, yeah, I'll let you go. So I hope that you are having fun finishing up your Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and uh, thinking about how you're gonna take what you've learned over the last six months into, into your um, creative work. Maybe some of you are going on to do the Christmas stitching. I, I am not gonna continue on with that. Um, but if you are continuing on, have a great time. And I look forward to seeing folks' work as it wraps up, folks' uh, books as they wrap up. All right, take care. Bye bye.